Good morning. It's Celeste of Astrology by Celeste here with a surprise live. Yes, I am. Mm. Hi. Hi, Christine Venus. I just lit my future. Um, this is from the Tarot Trio of the Birthday Candle Company, where there's a past, a present, and a future candle. I love these candles. They are so wonderful. I'm doing the future one today because we're going to be talking about stuff that's coming this week. And I just woke up in such a wonderful mood today. Yes, I did. I am a Taurus. And my birthday is on Friday, and Venus went into Taurus today, and I am feeling brand new. The eclipse season has turned me upside down, right side, and the last two months have been too much, but I like I feel like I'm back into myself, and it's been wonderful, exciting, crazy, insane, yeah. It's been a, it's been a journey. Hi, Jess, Squirrel of Mystery. Hey, hey, everyone. Tower of Love and Magic and Kristen. Yes, I'm here for a surprise live. I'm calling this Under One Sky. I don't know if I'm going to do it regularly or what. I'm still kind of figuring things out with like a, a new flow of things. Hi, Grace and everyone. Hi, Eleven Rosebud Eleven. Yes, and Joan and everyone. Okay. Let me get going. Yeah, thank you, Teresa. Yes, if you'd like to uh, buy, uh, treat me to a birthday coffee or cocktail, there's a link in my bio that you could do so with because my birthday is on Friday. Yes, it is. Okay, so I want to make a few announcements before I jump into talking about this astrology of this week. It is still, I mean, a lot of astrologers say eclipse season ends at the at, at, at the full moon last week, that Scorpio full moon. I don't agree. I see it as going through the whole month because we had a solar eclipse on April 8th. Um, and then the new moon in Taurus, I feel like is when like the energy of the eclipse really starts to, to dissipate. Although it's really in action, that solar eclipse until the next solar eclipse on October's 2nd. You will still see events coming through, especially when we get into cancer season, because we had a solar eclipse in Aries. Cancer is also a cardinal sign. So as things go through cancer, they will square that hot degree of 19 degrees of Aries, um, which we where we had that solar eclipse where the sun, moon, and Chiron were conjunct at 19 degrees of Aries. So anyway, I think... We're going to see events this week that are very related to the eclipse. But first, a few announcements. On Sunday, I'm having a Taurus New Moon workshop. This Taurus New Moon is so incredible for setting intentions on how you want to manifest your goals on the long term. Taurus is a fixed sign. And Venus is in, in, in at home on her throne in the sign of Taurus right now. Plus, we have Jupiter there expanding us and Uranus innovating. And then Mars is going to be in Aries starting tomorrow where Mars can do what it does with ease. So the intentions that you set for this Taurus new moon are going to be really wonderful for staying power. And I'll teach all about it. And then I'll do as many hot take readings as I can. So you can sign up at astrologybyceleste.com or the link in my bio. And you can just come for one of these workshops or get four at a discount. Yes, yes. But I love working with people and, and doing hot take readings. And yeah, we're going to have a good time with that. In August, I am going to speak for the Astrological Association in Leicestershire. I hope I said that right. The United Kingdom. Yes, yes, I am going to. I am now going to be an international astrology speaker, not just in the United States. Yes, I'm speaking at Norwalk later this month. You can still get online tickets to join virtually. I'm talking about eclipses for Norwalk. That's Memorial Day weekend. In Leicester, England, I'm going to be talking about the consultation chart tips for helping astrologers um, 
helping astrologers prepare for readings and, and be more impactful. And then I'm going to also talk about some stuff, astrology for next year, like it's called Fire in the Sky. I'm really really interested to talk about that. And then in October, I'm going to be speaking for the OPA retreat. I'm leading uh, in, in Park City, Utah. I'm leading um, I'm leading a tract, it's called, about moon mastery in person. And you're going to get five hours of diving deep into everything the moon in this incredible place. Kay Taylor, the president of OPA, the Organization of Professional Astrology, and I did a live on Friday where we, we talked about the conference. So you can go watch that. It's on my wall as well as my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, to deep, deep dive, you can go to the Celestial Insights podcast, where I really dove into everything that's coming up this week. But I just wanted to give some highlights and check in with people and and whatnot. I'm also going to pull some cards. So this is the Resurrection Oracle by Jenna De La Grataglia. I'm going to pull cards from this. This deck is fire. It is a um, rock pool deck. And it's her second solo deck. She's done art for um, other people, Colette Baron Reed, primarily for years. But she, she, this is her second deck that she's done, and it has been so helpful for me through eclipse. Season. I mean, the messages are on point, and I had some difficult stuff going on, and it really helped me get perspective and grounding throughout. So I highly recommend this deck. It's on my. I think it's on my. My, what do you call that thing? My Amazon storefront. I get a couple pennies if you buy it from there. And I'll post the link when I'm done. Okay. Let's see. Let me go back and see any comments. Oh, thank you for the happy birthday comments. Uh, pray for my pants. I have like six birthday outings. And I've like been, been doing pretty good about, well, I haven't, well, <laughs> the scale has been a little kinder to me lately. But hopefully I will make it through this birthday season <laughs> still able to fit in my clothes because I have so many events coming up. Yes, yes. Oh, your birthday's Wednesday, Sarah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Come back to the Wednesday program and tell me and I'll pull a card for your birthday. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so glad you love the podcast, Teresa. I, I was on fire when I recorded <laughs> that podcast. Yeah, I really enjoyed recording that one mm -hmm, for this week. Oh, thank you, Tara Love and Magic. Oh, you just came back from Morocco, Dion. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time. I have never been there, mm, but I love Moroccan food. Oh, thank you, Baggins. Yes, I'm going to have a wonderful time in the UK. I haven't been there since the early 2000s. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, Kristen. Yeah, Park City will be great. Yeah. I, I've not been to Park City. I've been to Utah, but not Park City. But a lot of these of these places have hot tubs in the rooms and all this kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Joan. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did I want to talk about today? Yes, we have a lot of shifting energy this week. And it's really interesting. Like I talked about in the podcast to really pay attention to what you see in the collective, in your own life, um, with Venus going into Taurus, because the first thing she does is tomorrow, she is going to square Pluto. And Pluto unearths things. I'm really interested to see who is on the stand in the Donald Trump hush money trial. Um, and I bet it'll be interesting if it's Stormy Daniels, um, because she is Venus in Taurus. Venus rules money, sent, um, love, money, and harmony things, and women. And the square to Pluto, she is a um, adult film star. So that, you know, that sexuality piece. So it'll make a lot of sense if she's on the stand tomorrow. We'll see if that's the day that she's on the stand. Mm. Yeah, or what secrets Pluto unearthed things, what secrets that we did not know are being unearthed in this trial. 
Yeah, it's really interesting. The Secretary of the United States, Anthony Blinken, is in, I think, in Saudi Arabia trying to negotiate a peace with, um, you know, Israel and Hamas to get to get hostages released, aid in, all of this kind of stuff. And now that Venus is in Venus is in Taurus, where she can do what she does with ease, which is bring things together, bring, build connection, build bridges. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this is going to help diminish some of the conflict, but then Mars goes into Aries where it can do what it does with ease, which is conflict and, and such. And Pluto's stationing on Friday to go retrograde. So Pluto's um, slowing down to a, a, a stop and Pluto rules, you know, the Lord of the underworld, these deep unconscious things within us, um, shadows revealed, it's volcanic. Um, hopefully there won't be any volcanoes erupting. There've been a bunch of volcano, volcanic activity going on. Um, yeah, this stuff on college campuses may come to a head tomorrow or Friday because tomorrow Venus squares Pluto as well as, and that could be Venus rules parties, more college graduations canceled, things like that. Mars and Aries, you know, we may see some students fighting each other or fighting the police or all this kind of stuff. This tension that's been brewing is can, could be coming to a boiling explosive point this week. And we also have a last quarter moon in Aquarius this week on Wednesday. Last quarter moons, these quarter moons are times of action. The last quarter is really a crisis of consciousness where it's the psychological integration of what came before it. But yeah, we shall see what happens this week. Ah, oh, no sirens the last couple of days. Ah, yeah, I have a lot of trips. Yeah, with these planes falling to pieces, in midair, slides falling off, all this mess. I have all these trips coming up. And every single one of them is when Jupiter, which rules long distance travel, is in the sign of its detriment, Gemini. So I am hoping. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping these airlines get their act together. It is crazy, this, 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 these planes. Well, it's part of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which perfected on April 20th. And you can think about this last year, as soon as Jupiter went into Taurus, we started seeing stuff about aviation problems. Um, Uranus rules aviation, Jupiter is associated with long distance travel. And as these two came together in the sign of Taurus, we have been seeing an Earth sign, these physical things with these planes, like the doors falling off and all this kind of mess. Yeah, there may be some more things being unearthed about um, the corruption or what's going on with Boeing has been. I need to find Boeing's chart because they are really, um, really um, in the news with all of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. I think there's some more comments. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You. Uh huh. Mm. Okay. The semester is ending, yeah. But you know what? Okay, so the biggest event, well, Donald Trump's trial and this Jupiter Uranus is happening within a couple degrees of his midheaven and the campus, the, the uprisings on college campuses. Jupiter educates, it rules college campuses and the Columbia University, I have their chart here, they set up the Gaza Solidarity Encampment on Wednesday before the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Um, yes, and this eclipse cycle was the same one as 1971 Kent State. There was violence on, the, on, on that college campus. So Columbia University was founded May 25th in 1754, and their south node is at is at 16 Aries, so within three degrees of the, the solar eclipse conjunct Chiron, and it squares 
their Saturn at at um, 16, the nodes square the Saturn at 16, at 16 um, Capricorn. So Columbia University has its North Node at 16 Libra and South Node at 16 Aries and Saturn retrograde at 16 Capricorn. Um, and their moon is in Cancer. We don't know the exact degree, but at noon on that day, it was 17, 17 um, Cancer. So there's this cardinal T-square baked into Columbia University's chart. You can think about how the moon rules the people um, and the Saturn rules the authority and they're in opposition opposition in the natal chart and two things have happened this eclipse season that are intimately interwoven into their chart we have that solar eclipse on the south node the south node is a drain a point of loss and the mercury station to go direct last thursday at 15 at 15 um at 15 Aries, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble talking, 15 Aries and uh, squaring Saturn. So you can think about Mercury rules students, square Saturn, the authority. They've got till 2 p.m. today to disband and they said that we're not going anywhere. Jupiter and Uranus met in fixed sign of Taurus. So I can see these things having staying power even into the fall. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but yeah, tomorrow there could be a lot of tensions erupting with Venus square Pluto and 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 um, Mars and Aries. Yeah, it's going to be fast, uh, fascinating. Hopefully, no one gets really hurt with this, but there's going to be a lots of lots of conflict. Yeah, potentially all over places. Yeah, okay. What else did I want to say? But I want for everyone to just be mindful with this shifting energy. Really notice with Venus square Pluto, what is comes up to your conscious attention about your, your relationship with um, Venus topics, love, money, and beauty, harmony, um, sensual pleasures, yeah, you can think about Taurus as a very sensual sign. This is a beautiful time to slow down, smell the roses, get yourself some flowers, treat yourself to some kind of like little gifts or things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't recommend any plastic surgery today or tomorrow. Notice if you see anyone who's got bad plastic surgery, who looks disfigured. Yesterday, <laughs> as Venus was coming in, Somebody posted something about somebody's implants that were flipped around their, their BBL. Yeah. Today on Christiane Elman Poor's program, she had a model named, I wrote, it, I wrote it down, Cameron Russell, who's like this business model for many, many years. She's a model, a writer, and an activist. And she wrote a book called How to Make Herself Agreeable to Everyone. And so Venus went into Taurus today. So you'll notice a lot of, 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 of people representing this energy. So she's, she's this beautiful woman who was a fashion model. You can think about Taurus ruling fashion, uh, being associated with fashion. And um, she's talking about the abuses in this industry. And it brought in the Venus Pluto. When she was 16, some photographer wanted to do some um, S&M shoot with her. And, and she said no and didn't work with him again for like seven years. It was made. He tried to make her feel small. And she told him she wanted to be president someday. And so she, she had to be careful about her image. And he just like scoffed at her or whatever. But that's the Pluto. Like um, trying to like he wanted to take these pictures of domination and all this kind of stuff. And then she talked about like complicity into some of the things that she did um, and whatnot, as well as talked about like the fashion, um, all these people making the fashion in in countries where they're paid pennies and have horrible work conditions. And so talking about all of that underneath the surface, ugly plutonicness of 
the fashion industry. And that was today, her on Christiane Amanpour. And also there was an article about Giada De Laurentiis, I think is how you say her last name. She's this famous chef who's really beautiful. Um, and she was talking about how she quit the Food Network. Venus Square Pluto ended, Pluto ends things like permanently. Yeah. So those are two examples, as well as the Secretary of State is um, Venus in in um, Taurus. You can think about how he's uh, he's a, a negotiator for peace. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see what goes on with that and the, tomorrow Mars in Mars in Aries. Okay, let's see. Oh, you just saved your head, Jess, and it's been amazing. You can feel all the water droplets. So you shaved your head when Venus was in Aries, probably. Yeah, and this and aside of you know, you can think about sharp cutting your hair. Yeah, I'm going to the beauty parlor tomorrow. Um, I may have to trim my hair a little bit, but I've been very happy with the length. We'll see, because Mars in Aries. I hope. Yeah, we got to be careful. I'm taking pictures this week, so. I want to, mm, yeah, I want to, I want it to look good. Okay. And that's all I wanted to really say. Just be mindful. Notice what is coming up within you with Pluto stationing to go retrograde. There can be like shadow stuff coming up to your conscious attention. And you could just be like, oh, that's interesting, especially tomorrow when the moon goes into Aquarius. It'll be interesting to see if, um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the International Criminal Court, is considering bring him and Hamas leaders and a couple other Israel leaders up on war crimes. Yeah, we'll see. Moon, we're having the sun in Taurus square, the moon in Aquarius. Aquarius rules groups. So tomorrow or Wednesday, it'll be, or in any time in this next week, we'll, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe that's what'll happen on Friday when Pluto stations to go retrograde. There's a lot of action this week. So just, I think the important thing, especially with Mars going into Aries, and actually tonight can be kind of wild with Mars at the 29th anoretic degree of um, Pisces. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay. It's just, uh, yeah, freedom, yeah. Oh, you're Aquarius still? In, ah. Oh, they'll decide if Germany is aiding genocide tomorrow. Oh, wow. I hadn't read about that. I'll have to read up on that. I'm a little behind because I'm doing a lot of stuff. Okay. Ah, yes. Oh, you did it on the full moon. A full moon in Scorpio. That's fantastic. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. I think I missed something. Mm. Okay. Hi, Julia. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Yeah, NYU too. too. But so this started at at uh, Columbia University. It's so interesting. I think it's interesting. It used to be called King's College. And you can think about kings are Jupiterian figures, royalty, as well as universities. So that was ground zero was Columbia University for this um, with Mercury stationing on its south node within a degree. If you have planets within a degree on either side of 15 degrees of Aries, where Mercury stationed to go direct, or 27 degrees of Aries, where it's stationed to go retrograde back at, on um, the back on April 1st, and Columbia has their Mars at 26 degrees of Cancer, so that's in a square to it. So that, that Mercury retrograde really impacted their chart. Now, these, these protests spread across the country. You can just think about how Mars in Pisces was coming to conjunct Neptune, and that, that perfected yesterday. Pisces energy just spreads things. And so Mars and Pisces, the taking the actions based on belief systems. Mars conjunct Neptune is the holy war transit. People willing to fight for their beliefs. And a lot of these students are potentially going to 
be suspended or not graduate or all these kinds of things. So they're very set in their convictions about wanting their universities to divest finances from Israel. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happened in Taurus, a sign of resources. They want the universities to divest from Israel um, or companies that... That uh, and, and companies that are associated with Israel, so they're willing to to to, to face the consequences in order to fight for something their ideals. Yeah. So the astrology is so on point and in line with what is going and, and what is going on. Yeah, and mm, it's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, NYU, it's coast to coast. It's coast to coast, what's going on. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at Germany's chart. Yeah, I have to look at there. Ah, your chart ruler, you have a Venus square. Your chart ruler is going retrograde. Mm. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the, the eclipse line. Yes, the eclipse line. Like, Lovely is right near the eclipse line. Violence. Yeah, I said Texas is going to be a hot spot. And the University of Austin, they had the, the, the police on campus through this college professor, this woman professor, like to the ground, very middle-aged woman um, who was just like a, 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 not giving them any problems. Yeah, very violently. Yeah. Yeah, Texas is a place. Emory University, it's all over the country and it's getting more. And now I was reading the Sorbonne in France. They, they're, they're, um, they're doing protests there too. Yeah, well, Pluto and Aquarius is power to the people energy. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, the, mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me pull these cards. I'm going to pull three cards from the Resurrection Oracle by Jenna De La Cortaglia. Just for some thoughts to, for this week with these really big shifts in the energy. They're very positive, but they're volatile. Whenever th there's this big shift, you know, it takes a while to adjust to it. So with Mars going into Aries tomorrow is a great day to, if you can, move your body, get some exercise um, in order to... You know, especially if you feel irritated or frustrated or anything. Yeah. I have my Tarot Trio Future Candle lit. And oh, they're having a special for Mother's Day. If you go to the link in my bio, if you want to get anything, uh, they have candles, they have astrology books and all sorts of stuff. Like a personal astrology book you can buy for someone for a gift. If you go to my link, it's 20% um, off. Okay. Let's see. It's in the link in my bio. Oh, thank you, June. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, they're major solar flares too. Hmm. Yeah. This week is going to be a lot of news. Okay. These. Oh, look how beautiful the back of the cards are for this. What do we need to know to how to best use this this week or see what's coming up or whatever? Okay. Let's see. Ah. Ooh. Okay. So it's the coupling, but it came upside down. So you can think about this as a lover's card upside down. There is energy to get annoyed with your partners and start some stuff passive aggressively today with Mars at the last degrees of Pisces, where you may not even realize why you're, you're starting this fight, but you're starting it with Pl Venus square Pluto, or they're starting it with you or something like that. Um, and then Mars goes into Aries and you're really fighting, like saying some things with Mercury and Aries can be like, boop, 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 saying some things. Um, so just be mindful of that so that you, that just be mindful that that energy is present to number one, have some little skirmishes, 
um, that you may not even, you'll be like, why did I even start that fight? Now we're mad at each other and it's Taurus season. Why are we, why are we fighting? We're supposed to be making love, not war with this energy, but Venus square Pluto, there's stuff bubbling, bubbling. So it's a great day to, to, um, to journal. Also think about things that you're coupling. Are you coupling with something that you want to uncouple from? Like a bad habit or excessive spending. That's a bad habit or whatever. Yeah. Let me read this. This is the coupling in reverse. Are you all that matters? Do you often complain and find that most of your compliments start with I? Perhaps this is not the right situation with for you or perhaps, oh no, do you, sorry. Do you often complain and find that most of your complaints start with I? Perhaps this is not the right situation for you or perhaps you have been solitary for too long. Maybe you forgot what it's like to give freely of yourself and listen to another person's perspective on things. Now is a good time to assess this. So let's unpack a few things by asking yourself some questions. Have I closed myself off and put up a wall? Mm, that's a great thing to think about with your partnerships. Have you closed yourself up? Or if you're single, but want someone, yeah. Mm. Am I used to and unwilling to open myself up to this in new experiences? Am I ready to be a team player and go for the win? Oh my God, a bird just flew into my window. Mm. Am I ready for this on all levels, physically, mentally, and spiritually? Like if you say you want a relationship, but are you really ready physically, emotionally, and spiritually to let someone in? That's a great journaling topic. Or if you're in a relationship and there's distance between yourselves, you can write about that as well. Mm -hmm. You do matter and it's good to open yourself up to different experiences and relationships. Venus also rules self-esteem. And in the sign of Taurus, there's a relation to self-esteem. Venus compares. So do you find yourself comparing yourself to others and coming up lacking is a great thing to think about. Yeah, what relationships do you need to uncouple from? Ooh, sober, sober is a uncoupling from all false narratives and fear of vulnerabilities. I love this. Arb wants to uncouple from being single. Well, I want you to like think about those questions that were asked, Arb. Yeah, and open, I, Arb, is Taurus season, call love in. You can come to the workshop on Sunday to set intentions, to manifest the love you want in your life. Be specific with your request because the universe, yes, Arb, this will be recorded. You can watch it back either here and then later today, I'll put it on YouTube. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. Okay, yes, so think about that. What do you want to couple with? And then there's crossing over. So this is like, for some people, it's like it's time to release things and let them go. And and and, and, um, mm, and crossing over to, or crossing over to the next iteration of the relationship. So this makes me feel like, like the death and rebirth cycle. What in your relationships to yourself or others do you need to let go of so that you can cross over into new territory? Yeah, letting go of false narratives. I love that with, yeah, shedding the old. So this is the Pluto energy. Yeah, Venus upside down, the couplings with Pluto crossing over. And the, the last card is your first time. Yes, it is. So this is like a new start. Ah, yes. I love this reading. So there's a lot of inner work you can do this week. Oh, your first time. No inhibitions. Mm. You may experience many first times in your life from intimacy, food, and family situation. Trying something new. Yes. So what? Mm. Yeah, so think about what you're going to leave behind, any things, false narratives or whatever, in your relationships and cross over, shed the old into the new. And, you know, there's 
a new start. There's new energy coming in with the new moon coming up next week. But even this week, yeah, I think there can be really, really amazing things. Mm. Yeah, this is great. A great reading. Great things to contemplate and think about with all this stuff. Okay. Yes, Rosie, you can call love in. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone's getting deplucked. <laughs> I love that. Okay, I will be back on Wednesday for the Astro and the Oracle and Friday with Deborah Silverman, one of my teachers. We're going to talk about the astrology and what not. So I'm really excited for that. Okay, so, and I hope to see you Sunday. So go to the link in my bio and you can come to the workshop if desired or one of my conferences. I'd love if you go to any of the conferences I'm speaking at, come over and say hi, please. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're in Deborah's, Deborah's school. Yeah. We're going to be talking on Friday. Okay. Great. Yes. See you soon.